stage school called Stagecoach back in England, and it does an hour of drama, an hour of singing, and an hour of dance. And Mum thought, yeah, brilliant, we'll go in there every week, burn our energy, brilliant. Um, and and I, would, I came home one day with a permission slip to do a Oxford pantomime, which is like the thing they do every year, and it was for the children's ensemble. And I said, Mum, can I audition? She went, no. No way. So I went in to Stagecoach next week, and I put my name down, and I said, oh yeah, don't worry, Mum says it's fine. Don't worry. Um, like, like you do. And, um, and the permission slip came through with my time where about the audition was, and Dad said, well, if she's got the guts to do that, let's see what she's got. So I got through the auditions, and I got in to do the show, and it was directed by Peter Duncan. And he came up to Mum after the shows had finished and said, look, you've got to get her into an agency, she's got something. And I was like, really? You're kidding? No way. And um, Mum was like, okay, um, not really, but okay, we'll have to think about it. And we waited three months, Mum did lots and lots of research on ones that were suitable, because um, Mum and Dad and me also wanted me to have still a childhood, still be a child. And do what I love, but then still do my education, because education comes first. Um, because if acting doesn't work for me, then I've got education as my backup. So I did, I got into the agency, and I auditioned for two, and I got into both of them, and we were stuck, because we didn't know which one to go for. So we waited a couple of weeks, and we waited for one that wanted me, so a &J Management came back first. That's who I was playing. <laughs> <laughs> um, and they came back and said, look, we want you, are you going to come? So we said, yeah, sure. And then I got BBC dramas through that, and I've done things, um, and so... Oh, sorry. No, no, it was a, it, it was a feedback thing. Oh, cool. it, was a, okay. it was a little too close. <laughs> so, sorry, about that. go on. <laughs> and then I obviously got into Harry Potter and I did all the auditions, and it's just gone off from there, really. Scarlett? Mine's really not as great as that. But um, basically, when I was little, I was like, not being centre for attention, but, oh yeah, kind of. <laughs> and then, um, what happened was, I was always such a perfectionist like, in school. If I didn't get an A, then it was just the worst thing ever. So I was always pushing myself. And my mum and dad thought it would be great for me and my sister to do Irish dancing, so I did that for like eight years. And then when it came to coming to secondary school, I didn't get into my first choice. So um, what ended up happening was one of my mum's clients um, was a secretary at a school called the Arts Educational School, and she said that I should audition. So I did, and I went along and I got in. And then when I was just doing work there, my drama teacher, because they, they didn't promote um, having an agent at my school, even though it was an art school, because they took education so seriously. They thought they wanted you to do it, and then afterwards you can get an agent and do all that when you're older. But I remember at parents, even we all sat down, my mum and dad were there, my drama teacher said, you should really do this, but just don't tell anyone. So every time, so I, I did the same thing, I auditioned um, with a and and I got in. Oh, actually, I was with, yeah, I was with someone else, and I used to do Saturday classes and all of that, and then um, what ended up happening was, I would just miss school quite often to go on auditions, and I just always used to say I had a dentist appointment, even though I never had braces, I've never had a filling in my life. And they used to come back, what's wrong with your teeth? And be like, and they're like, okay, like, ignore it. And then, yeah, I just ended up doing that and I started getting stuff like I got an advert. And um, yeah, it was great, it was a Cadbury advert, actually. And um, I told this story earlier, it was so embarrassing. Um, my sister and I, basically what happened was, it was someone on a bus, a guy, and he would tap me on the shoulder and I turn around and he would give me this bit of chocolate that I would eat. And on my way to school, I got on the bus with my sister and we were sitting there and around the corner from where I went to school there's a, like an all boys school and there were so many of them all sitting on the top deck and so me and my sister were like the only girls and we went and sat at the top and literally five minutes after being on this bus I got a tap on my shoulder and one of the boys handed me something and the whole bus just cracked up. I was so embarrassed, I literally like, wanted to die in my seat. But yeah that's it really and then I just started getting some stuff and then Harry Potter when I was like 15, 16. Well, for me, I was uh, a bit of a wild child when I was younger. <laughs> and uh, I used to love like singing and dancing and things like that, and Mum and Dad weren't really pushed on it. So we used to go out for a drink. Well, Mum and Dad would go out for a drink. Like, oh, <laughs> we don't start that young at home. But Mum and Dad would go have a drink on a, a Sunday, I think it was, actually, and 
there used to be like a talent competition. So I decided I was going to enter myself into the talent competition. So I entered it in and I started singing and I ended up winning it. So I was like, happy days. <laughs> so I kept on doing it then for a couple of weeks afterwards and I decided that I wanted to go off and do like dance and things like that. So mum and dad brought me to a place called Billy Barry's in back in Ireland and it's tap dancing and singing. So we joined the agency there and on my very first day I got a, I went for an audition and I got the part. And I'll never forget it, like I was, I got, I done the audition, I got the part, I filmed it. And on the way home from getting paid, I was sitting in the back of my mum's old car, which is like an old mini, you know, like it was beaten up and horrible. And I was sitting on the back seat with my money, because I got cash for some reason. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I was sitting in the back window and I was counting out the people behind me. I had like a thousand pounds at the time. I was like, yes, I've made it. Like, I'm going to retire now. <laughs> One day work as a five-year-old. As a five-year-old, that's a lot. So, uh, yeah, that's how I got into that. And then from there, I kind of went on to like different agencies and so I could learn drama, things like that. More singing, more dancing. And then, like, Angela's Ashes came along. I'd done that. And Ginger Hair for that, which is cool. <laughs> I love Ginger Hair, full stop. And then I done like another thing, uh, Yesterday's Children, and then the biggest thing, Harry Potter came along and it was just absolutely ridiculous like. So, yeah, it was cool. That's how I got into acting anyway. <laughs> so, you said, you mentioned Harry Potter came along. How did that happen? More in detail, do you know? Like, I do, that's kind of a strange one. I've heard so many different stories of how I got the part. <laughs> <laughs> no, honestly. Originally I heard Spielberg was meant to uh, direct the movie and he wanted an all-American cast and things happened that they didn't want an American cast for it. So they went off and they got Chris Columbus and he said, okay, English characters. And they'd cast all the characters as, as uh, like English characters and Seamus Finnegan included. But uh, then he said, no, we need an Irish guy to play Seamus. So I went over, I flew over from Ireland to the UK and I'd done a screen test. And actually this is kind of strange. I didn't know what Harry Potter was. See, I'm dyslexic. So like, I don't read, I've never read. I've only just started reading. So when I went over, I was thinking that the, the uh, director's name was Harry Potter. <laughs> so uh, I kind of walk in and I get introduced to Chris Columbus and this is the uh, director. I was like, crap. <laughs> What's going on here? Am I in the right place? And then they were like, hey, and here's Daniel Radcliffe, he plays Harry. I was like, oh, so this is Harry Potter. <laughs> so I did a screen test with Dan, Rupert and Emma. And the next day was the read-through. And they said, Devon, can you come along to the read-through? And Mam wasn't pushed because we didn't know if I had the part or not. But all along, the producers had already made up their mind that they wanted me as Shane Finnegan. And it was meant to be like a big surprise. I want to get to uh, the read-through. I'd walk in and I'd see my name on the table with everybody else's. So I walked in and I was like, I couldn't get over it. Like, I, I never realised how big Harry Potter was going to be because I didn't know who Harry Potter was. <laughs> but uh, since then, like, I, I didn't read the books until after all the movies were made. And I've read them all now and they're absolutely amazing. <laughs> I have to get that in there so you don't think I'm doing it. You do. <laughs> oh no, I didn't read. I only started reading because uh, Matthew Lewis, we were filming in Newcastle, I think, and he had no Harry Potter books. Actually, he had no books with him, full stop. And we went in to buy books from Matthew, and I was like, all right, yeah, fun, fun. <laughs> so he was walking along, and he sees these books called Darren Shan. He's the author. And he bought them, and then ever since then, Matthew and Darren Shan became very good friends. And it was the first book that I started reading was one of Darren, Darren Shan's books. And that kind of got me hooked on reading, and then I went on from that to Harry Potter. And from Harry Potter went to the Hunger Games. So they're the only books I've ever written. Very cool. Scarlett, how did you get Harry Potter, the role? When I was, I think I was 15, and I auditioned for Luna Lovegood. I know, I don't know why. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, so I got called in, it was really great um, to meet people. And then they were like, okay, thank you, yeah, great. And so then I left, and I didn't hear anything. And I saw the film when it came out, and I was like, yes! She is perfect. Why am I for this? I don't know. And then the following year, I got called back in for Parity Parkinson, and then that was it, really. And then I got another call back, and then I went and did a screen test with Tom, and um, yeah, and then that was it. And it was 
So they, they must have had notes? They must have had like a recording or you on file for, for that? Yeah, I think so. I don't know. It must have, but it was weird. I don't know why I went for Lena you know, Lovegood. I have no idea. But no, it was great. If I hadn't have gone for it, then I probably wouldn't have got Pansy, so very grateful. Ellie, how did you? Um, my first audition for Harry Potter was in 2008. I think it was November, December time. Um, but at that point, they didn't realise that the film was going to be split into two. So they said, like three weeks after I'd had my audition, they said, uh, we're going to leave it because we're going to split the film into two. Um, so if you're right next year, or in however long, then we'll call you back if you meet the requirements. So we thought, oh, okay. Um, and we waited a year, and they phoned up, and they said, look, you meet our requirements. Do you want to come in for an audition? And I was like, okay then. Sure. Um, so I went in for my first audition um, and then I got a call back and I went in for my second audition and then I had a third audition and then it was the screen test, I think. Um, but all the auditions I went through, I did them with Benedict, who plays the other name. So that was quite good because we got to know each other. Um, and then I went for a couple of um, I'm not sure if they were auditions, but I think that when they were choosing the role for Young Petunia, I went to sit in with them to sort of match my face and our looks together. And then we did the screen test with Young Petunia, um, which was good. And then I got the call um, about a, a week later, maybe, after the screen test, I think. Probably about that. And um, yeah, it was completely surreal, I didn't know I was, because I had read the books from a very young age, I knew exactly what it was, and I was thinking, whoa, oh my god, oh my god, I'm in Harry Potter. So, yeah, it was really cool. Yeah. Well, Ali, you've touched on this too. Uh, one of